Not quite. So how does this monstrosity work? Um, a normal car engine is an internal combustion engine. It draws in fuel and air, you have a controlled explosion, you have the burning of fuel inside, internal combustion. Sometimes a Stirling engine is referred to as an external combustion engine, a fire on the outside that you're using to create power. Um, it's kind of a misnomer because the, the reality is you don't necessarily need fire. What you need is you need a temperature differential. You need a hot side and a cold side. And as long as you have a differential, you can create power. So how does it work? On the hot side, you're heating up a gas in here. When you heat a gas, it expands. Some of that gas is pushed through. It's plumbed through to this side of this other piston. This is the cold side. On that side, it expands less. It doesn't contract, the wrong word, but it expands less. So you have a pressure differential between the hot side and the low side. And so this piston in here is sort of a tight fit in there, like a normal car piston. This one's actually kind of not a tight fit. And so the air can move around that piston so this is called the displacer piston. All it does is just push air back and forth, and it pushes it across over to this side. This is where your actual power comes from, is on this side. Um, so all it does is move the same air back and forth. And in fact, you can make these where they are sealed, and you're not using air, because there are other gases that expand more aggressively than the, the air we breathe. These have been around a long time. So the actual patent for a Stirling engine was in 1816 by a guy named Robert Stirling. That's why they were named this. Um, but there were actually working prototypes previous to this. So this, is, this has been around for a long time. Um, but they, they don't really work in a lot of aspects for industrial needs. They're kind of a unique oddity. Um, so I was just going to try to set up something like this to take to RoboGames to just sort of a display to show how this works. And so that's when I got this guy and I was trying to figure out a way to get enough heat applied to this to keep it running without using an open flame because I'm not going to be standing there watching an open flame all weekend. So one of the things I came up with was to use some uh, incandescent bulbs there to heat that up. Unfortunately, with this type of design, it wasn't quite enough heat to create the heat differential I needed to make this work. So we had to go with a different design. So this is another style of a Stirling engine. In this case, you know, one temperature side, the other temperature side, you can see there's a plunger in between. And this is essentially what was moving the air back and forth. So that the air goes above and then below the plunger that's in there. And then here's the displacer over here to move it back and forth. So it's the same concept, but a slightly different layout. The unique thing about these is although they don't put out necessarily a lot of power, it takes less of a temperature differential to get this to function. And in fact, this one can even just sit on a cup of coffee and run. That's all the more heat that you need to make this work. So this is the base I was going to use for the other setup. So here's a little incandescent bulbs to provide the heat. Um, so let's throw the low temp guy on. Just kind of set it over these lights for a second. And try to make sure that we're going to get enough heat out of this situation for this guy to run. It's going to take a few seconds to warm up. Not quite.
Almost. So we are going to get enough heat out of those two little light bulbs to make this run. So this should be something I can set up as a display and then just essentially leave it running throughout the weekend. And as long as the light bulbs don't burn out, it should just continue to run and keep going. So now all I need to do now is just kind of set it up as a set it up as a display. Um, one of the key things for this, if it's going to be on a bench by itself, running like this for the weekend, is I'm going to have to build a display around it to keep fingers from uh, from going out and you know touching it. So uh, I'll have a little bit more work to get this ready to set up the display, but. Uh, I think it'll be kind of a cool thing to just have running and sitting there for the weekend. So here we are, we have the, the enclosure built for it. Um, it runs real good. I've actually had this run in for uh, several hours at a time without any issues. So I think it should be good to run as a display for the entire event. Um, so basically this one is done. We may do some sort of display, you know, like a video to explain what's going on with it. But uh, I don't know, it's been kind of a fun little project and it'll be at RoboGames. <laughs>